helping hands, as in helping out. I tell you what, more importantly, your hands. Think for a minute, what your hands look like. Man, it's the year about 1930. His name is Isaac. Isaac is a New York, he's a New York boy. Actually, actually he's a Brooklyn New York boy. I tell you better yet, he's a Jewish Brooklyn New York boy. I'm telling you through and through. Remember now, it's the 1930s when he comes into the game and as a result of it, man, he'll tell you his mom, quintessential mom, can do, does do. His dad was a bus driver, he's one of four. And Isaac will tell you, but man, he said, you know, high school, grammar school, uneventful. He said, but man, no sooner I get out of high school than when he says the world changed, he said it was 180 degrees overnight, World War II, Hitler, massacring the Jews. He said, man, I was just like, where did this come from? How did this was allowed? He said, man, they're, they're killing my family. They're killing my faith. They're, my country's now involved in it. He said, man, I'm going to war. He tells his folks, and his folks, he says, gives him the greatest advice. He goes to war, he comes back, and his parents give him the greatest help in hand. He says they told him, look, you want to go to college, we'll pay for you to go to Syracuse. You finish? That's great. You don't graduate? You pay us the money back. He said, man, what a helping hand. He said, I got nothing. He said, I decided to marry my high school sweetheart. He said, without a doubt, Isaac will tell you, best decision ever. He said, I knew I loved her from the get-go. She is the right girl for me. He said, man, it was like just teeth in a gear. He said, man, to this day, he'll tell you, it was absolutely the best spot for him, best decision he ever made. She was, quote, his helping hand. They said they started struggling. He said they had to move to California. He said, man, we couldn't find work. He said, I couldn't even sell pencils. He said, man, I am struggling. I go work for a TV station. I'm behind the camera. I'm in front of the camera. I'm helping over here. I'm doing this. He said, finally, they're short a couple stand-ins in a movie called Highway to Hell. Smashing hit. That's right. As a result of it, he gets in it, and he says, man, I, I can do this. And then he gets in another one called Heartbreak Kid. Okay, it's a step up, and obviously a small step. And then next thing you know, he gets in Zoolander 1 and 2. Wow, I thought that would have done it, but I was wrong. It didn't. As a result of that, he said, man, his wife says, no, look, you can continue to do this. He said, but if you're ever going to make money for the family, man, you got, we got to get you in a TV series. Man, he thought he was popular in 1960s, 70s. He gets real popular in the year 2000 when he becomes uh, George Costanza's dad. Ah, ah, George Costanza's dad. Wow, that's scriptural, my brother in Christ. You know, it's amazing. He, he's with George, he's the king of queens. And you know, you know him as Jerry Stiller, right? Maybe not. Okay. As a result, please just look it up, okay? My brother and sister Christ, here's the best line ever. They asked him, he said, man, how did you know? Go back and interview with your wife. He said, I got to ask you, the interviewer said, how did you know she was the right one for you? He said, my very first date. He said, I live in Brooklyn, New York. He said, man, I picked the most expensive restaurant there is. He said, man, talk about work. He said, man, I'm selling apples. I'm selling pencils. I'm running papers. I'm saving everything I can. I'm cripping. I'm staving. He said, I'm even starving so I can get enough money to get her on that date. Because he said, man, that's the only way I'm going to get in the game. It's the only way I'm going to woo her. He said, man, I'm, I'm going to do all I can do. He said, man, I get her. We go to the, this restaurant. He said, when we open the menu, he said, I'm in trouble. It's even more expensive than I thought. He said, my wife looks at the menu and orders coffee. He said, and so the interviewer said, so man, that's when you knew she was for you? He said, no. It's when she picked up the silverware and put it in her purse when we left. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not the greatest line ever? A helping hand, right, my brother and sister in Christ? <laughs> that has nothing to do with the gospel. It's just a great story. My brother and sister in Christ, it is about a helping hand. And it's amazing, John the Baptist, when they ask him about who he is and thinking he's the Christus, he doesn't even get involved in the discussion. He said, the only thing that matters are whether or not you're going to help someone. He said, so if you got two coats, then I'm going to ask you to give one up. If you got extra food, I'm going to ask you to give that up. And you two tax collectors and you two soldiers. Now stop, okay, you need to understand this. My brother and sister in Christ, this is Luke's gospel. 
Luke is the only one to speak of this story. Luke is not an apostle. He's a physician by trade, so he's very exacting. John the Baptist has just come public. Now, this is what you need to know about John the Baptist. Yes, he is an only child. That is correct. My brother and sister in Christ, he's born about three months ahead of Christ. We do know that his parents died fairly young, and when he goes to the wilderness, there's actually a school in the wilderness, and they're called the Essen, Essen Jews. They're very, very strict. Right? It's an all-male environment. Now, let me make sure you understand. There are four different types of Jews for the most part. There's the Sadducee, which has the first, they only believe in the first five books of the Bible. They don't believe in the afterlife, don't believe in angels. It's sad, you see. Okay, that'll be the last time you hear that joke. Okay. Then there's a Pharisee that believes in the first five books plus tradition. How you wash cups, how you eat. You got to eat on your left hand so you don't, you, you eat with your right. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters in Christ, how far you can walk on a Sunday, you can't walk more than three quarters of a mile, total and complete. So if you're going to walk out there, you better make sure you can get back. That's how strict they were. Then all of a sudden there's the zealots. Those are the people that are a little bit off the reservation. They take everything to the stream. And then there are the Essen Jews. They usually don't shave, which is why we believe he has a beard. We believe he was an Essen Jew. We actually believe Christ fell into that category as an S and Jew. They were very strict in everything they did. So when he's coming out to preach, man, he's, he's telling you, he owns next to nothing. They actually believe you be, you're going to be baptized in water. That's how forward thinking they are. My brother in Christ, when he talks to the tax collectors, the tax collector is the wealthiest person of his day, even wealthier than the Romans. The reason the Rome wants them is because they know the people, they know how it works, they know the politics, they know how things are done. So therefore, what happens is, as a tax collector, Rome wants you because they need you. The Jews know that if they ever want to pay the Romans, they got to get through you. The Jews don't like you because you work for Rome, even though you're Jewish. The Romans, the Romans don't like you because you are Jewish. And what they do is they charge a little bit extra, what they call a scenerage, which is like a, a commission of sorts, depending on who you are and whatever. That's why the good Lord is telling them. John the Baptist, excuse me, is saying, man, don't, don't extort more than what it is. Whatever you owe, they owe, they owe. Then he tells the soldiers, when you take over another country and you go in there, pretty soon you start saying, you know, I like that horse. I like that table. I like that stuff you have in your, in your cabinet. You can't just take it. And matter of fact, don't extort some people. And matter of fact, be happy with your wage. He's saying that you got to offer a helping hand to people. He says, that's how John the Baptist describes himself. Now, go back in Scripture. All of our best players are people that, I tell you what, you can describe them. I bet you if I could show you a picture of their hands, I bet you 10% of you would know who they are. You're good Catholics, that's why I'm telling you that. Uh, let me explain. I bet you if I said his hands were immaculate, I'm telling you they were well taken care of. There wasn't a blister on them. Every finger had a ring on it. As a matter of fact, oftentimes his finger would always be pointing because he's judging. And next to him would be a little bowl and towel. Ah, very good. For your tax exempt, for the one person that got it right. That's right. It had been Pontius Pilate. My brother and sister Christ, if I told you that he's holding a, a spear tip and it's about yay long. As a matter of fact, it's so long you could actually still have part of the spear tip outside the body and it would touch all the way to the heart. And as a matter of fact, if you saw his hand, it would be kind of cut up. It would be bleeding a lot, and it actually the spear tip would be bleeding onto him. You'd probably say it might be Longinus. And I tell you, that's right. That's exactly whose hands it was. If I told you the lady's hands were female, and as a matter of fact, make sure you understand this. As a female, you have absolutely no say in what goes on in the world. You're not even counted, my brother in Christ, when they start to do the genealogy. The fact that Christ puts it in his genealogy He's doing it to drive home the point. I make all things new. But imagine she's holding the veil of Christ in his face. You and I would know, man, that's the hands of Veronica. You know her name means true icon. You know when they translate it again what her name means? Nike. Isn't that a height of contradiction? My brother and sister in Christ, if I told you that his hands were so gnarled, it looked like arthritis had started in at a young age. They're like catcher's mitts. They're so torn up and so cut up, you would say, man, man, those got to be, and if he's holding a rope in his hand and fishing others, you'd say, man, that's got to be the hands of Peter. 
My brother and sister in Christ, well, that's exactly the point. You and I now sit here 2,000 years later. We just heard this gospel about John the Baptist saying, I can describe how people do things with their hands. So if I were to ask you, my brother and sister Christ, if I were to go to you and say, I want you to describe your hands to me. If I were to take a picture of your hands and put it out there, would people know, that know you say, I know who those are. Well, I'll tell you what, if we took a picture of your hands, what would most people assimilate with it? A cell phone? Your hands are texting? Or maybe, maybe it's a computer mouse, because you're always on the computer. Maybe it's a remote control. Is your hands always seen in anger, so they're balled up and it's always in a fist? Or they're always pointing at somebody else and judging or condemning somebody else? If they took a picture of your hands, would there be a rosary anywhere in the picture? If they took a picture of your hands, would there be a prayer cord somewhere in it that says, man, that's, that's a prayerful person? They know right away that it's you or it's me or it's somebody they know. If it was next to somebody, my brother and sister Christ, and there's a crucifix and they're holding it, would you know who it was? You know, they said when Mother Teresa used to pray the, uh, her rosary, she would put her hands and she'd cross her thumbs like this because she said it was the height of humility to make sure that your hands were completely straight. And she said, and it would always be wrapped in a rosary. You know what's amazing? You see pictures of her feet everywhere you go, but you and I never recognize it. There's usually a couple feet, and next to it is a sandals. By and large, most of the time, those are Mother Teresa's feet. The fact of the matter is, you and I would recognize it sooner than later. The fact of the matter is, would they recognize ours? Will we offer a helping hand to those in need? My brother and sister Christ, if they actually made a picture or a poster of your hands, would it be something that they would know, that you and I would know and say, now that was a disciple of Jesus Christ. That is who John the Baptist is talking about. My brother and sister Christ, don't you see? Remember Matthew 7, not everybody who knows my name will enter my kingdom, but only those who do the will of God. What good does it do in St. Paul's or Corinthians to say, have faith to move mountains? And when you don't have sacrificial love, you're a resounding gong if you're not willing to be charitable. My brother in Christ, you and I tell each other all the time, man, I love you. Love means sacrifice. I so love the world, I sent my son for the sacrifice of many. If our only way to get to heaven, and we're not, we're not Jansenists, which means you can, or um, I'm trying to think of the other uh, paganistic group, that, that you can get there by work. You get there by God's grace. And because God's grace, he gives you faith. And because he gives you faith, you do good works. And because you do good works, people know you have faith. My brothers in Christ, you and I need to learn to start helping people. We need to start reaching out. I tell you this, there is no greater gift than when you and I reach out for love of neighbor to help somebody we don't like get where they need to be. So if I were to take a picture of your hands next week, would they see a picture of you holding a rosary and people come to know you that that's who you are? Would they see a picture of you holding a prayer card, a crucifix? Would it be your hands in prayer? My brother and sister Christ, ask yourself, if I took a picture of your hands and showed it to family, what would I have to put in it to, so that they may recognize who you are? And if it's not something to help, then it tells you where we are. And I'll leave you with this. I don't know who said the quote, but it was spot on. If you want to thank God for your eyesight, if you want to thank God for your eyesight, then there's no better way than giving a helping hand to someone in dark. My brother and sister Christ, help someone. Amen? Amen. 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 Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand.